Welcome to this lesson. I'm excited to share with you some technical kind of dark magic <laughs> that a lot of animators don't really understand. And so hopefully at the end of this lesson, you'll have a greater understanding and technical knowledge, not just about Maya, but this is a computer science, math, universal concept that's gonna be true in any 3D software. So what you're learning in this lesson can, can be applied and used all across the board. So, and that subject is rotation order, the kind of Euler rotation or E E E U L E R rotation, Euler rotation. What did I, what did I just say? Euler rotation. <clears throat> that is the kind of rotation that we're going to be doing inside of Maya. It's a reference to some deep math that we don't really need to understand just yet, but we can see it happening in real time and the implications of that in regards to something called gimbal lock. So let's first start with just the basic understanding of the axes and where they're rotating from. So if we look at this arrow, it's pointing in the positive Z direction. We can look at our little mini axis map here. If, if I rotate around, you can see it moves. And that if we want to rotate in the Z direction, it's actually pointing from currently screen right to screen left. So we're saying that's positive Z right now. So if we want to rotate around positive Z, right, it's going to be in this direction. So we're actually rotating in this direction for the axis pointing right to left. So it can be a bit counterintuitive sometimes when you think, you know, it's like someone saying, which way is the wind blowing? Are, are you saying which way is the wind blowing from or which way is the wind blowing to? So some of this can be, you know, especially I feel like I have some dyslexia. These concepts can be even more confusing. So that's why I want to just start here and really build up to some co more complex concepts here in the lesson. But essentially, this direction means we're rotating around this axis, right? Okay. So I just want to clarify that, and that's true for every axis. In any direction it's pointing, is it's actually we're rotating it in a perpendicular orientation, right? If we look at the manipulator itself, we can see the blue axis here will also denote that, okay? So let's build on that knowledge because we're just looking at a single axis there. Now let's combine all three. To be able to combine all three, <clears throat> we need to acknowledge the fact that all three move together, right? Whenever we're looking at a rotation axis, we get all three here. We get the green, we get the red, and we get the blue, right? We get X, Y, Z. And I'm doing it in this format, X, Y, Z, because that's the default value. There's six arrangements of these axes, and we'll look at those in a second. But I'm choosing X, Y, Z because that's how, if you look in the channel box, those attributes are displayed, X, Y, and Z. And this is the default value of what's called a rotation order. And the rotation order of any object, really you can select and go see it on any object if you go into the attribute editor, you can see it right here, rotation order X, Y, Z. And that's why I'm choosing X, Y, Z for the first example. We'll get into the, some others here in a second. So I'm choosing that example because I also wanna demonstrate another bit of counterintuitiveness. We know that each axis has to follow the next one, right? For them to be able to move together in tandem, we need to parent-child relationship them in a way that they follow each other. And in the X, Y, Z rotation order, that's, or, or in any rotation order, the actual parent is the one at the end, which to me is a bit counterintuitive because especially when you look at the channel box, um, you can see it's listed if I select anything, X, Y, Z. So I think the top, you know, is going to be the parent. Or if you look in the hierarchy of anything, you know, X, Y, Z, if we look at this example, we can see it's actually Z, Y, X. Even though we say X, Y, Z, if we look in the, in the hierarchy, it's actually the opposite. So what we have here is Z is actually the parent. And these two are the children. Let me change the color here. But between these two children, there's also another parent. The Y is the parent of X. So we also need to be aware of that. Okay. And we can see this play out if 
we watch this bit of animation here, as I scrub through, you'll be able to see that Z, even though it's the last in the order, is going to be the parent. So we come in and we can start combining these axes together. So we have Z and Y, so we're going from right to left, and then we'll have X come in at the end. And then if we start to rotate these, and I add a, an arrow here to kind of, because it's hard to see circles rotate, I'll add an arrow here and then start rotating on X, okay? So that's the first kind of uh, rotation in the order. And because it's the last child, nothing else is following it. Right? It's the lowest in the pecking order of that rotation order, even though it's coming first. And so that's the kind of counterintuitiveness that we need to acknowledge and understand so that everything else after this makes more sense. So we know the rotation order, how we say it, is actually the reverse of the parent-child relationship. So if we look at something like X, Y, Z, we know that Z is the parent. And that's going to be true for any kind of rearrangement and mix and mash of these three axes are going to be true. The one always at the end is the parent, okay? And this significance will make more sense here in a moment. As we start to rotate the other axes, so we've demonstrated X, now let's rotate in Y. Now we can see we actually run into a problem. Where is this axis? We've lost this axis here in black because we have rotated that middle child, all right? that middle child of the rotation order. So that creates what's called a gimbal problem, which we're gonna look further into in this lesson. So let's take a broader look at all of these in order together. So these are all six arrangements. Thanks for watching that excerpt from a lesson that's in the Animator's Journey Animation School Beginners module. I go on to explain more things like gimbal lock, how to fix it, the rotation order you want to have for a camera, for example, the most common rotations that we want to be doing. So it goes into more detail in that single lesson. And that's just one section of one lesson that's in the entire kind of course of Animator's Journey Beginner. So check out animatorsjourney.com if you want to get started in learning and leveling up your animation skills at animatorsjourney.com, a new way to learn animation in animation school.